Don't know them. Exact same thing again. There's a sky tower. Clear sky. I'll try and zoom as far into it as I can without it being shaky. Oh. It's on a tr tripod, but what is that? God, I missed it again. I mean it's massive, that is big because you look at it and it'll weigh in the distance and then you bring it to the fore and it's just going to disappear underneath the cloud but that's big and it's certainly bigger than it was the last time to uh, the Soundbringer Studios here in Pyrenees. Today we're going to talk about um, some big changes on this planet. Yeah. Uh, things that have happened recently. We had some really big uh, things happen recently in the world. And, um, so tell us about how you came here and what you just found out about. What's going on. What's going on. Yeah, tell us about what's going on really. Okay. Well, I'm here. I'm here in the Pyrenees. Well, it began on the after a crazy dream about this thing, Nibiru, Planet X. Okay. And so many people talked about it. I heard, you know, I heard that people came to the Pyrenees in 2012. Mm -hmm. And the crazy story was that they wanted to get on a spaceship. And well, that's yeah, what the media garage, told us. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had another friend that I had taken part, actually, <laughs> in this thing. Yeah. But, you know, being out here, I realised that most people I speak to tell me that they came out here because this thing was coming in. You know, it's been seen coming in, this whatever it is, Nibiru, Nemesis. No, yeah. This thing came in, lots of people talked about it. What was it? How soon would it be here? 
And as I'm understanding, people came here with the same idea as I, 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 came, I put up in my new video about we should come up here and get seed banks together, we should come up here and make communities, we should come yeah, up here and get together and live together, make share. communities, yeah, share and yeah. So let's go back to, um, to how you came to, to, to Travis Dream basically and how, how it appeared to you, your, your first impressions of, of this new co coming, how did you see it? You talked about earlier, you mentioned to me there's like a wall coming to us or a barrier or something. How do you, how do you sense this presence? Well, I've written a book called Laughing Gas, mm -hmm. and in, when and it, I had a crazy experience. I know, I mean, it all sounds so crazy, but I mean, it is such a crazy time, and, and mm -hmm. in such a crazy time, it, 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 we experience it as craziness. All around us is craziness. So it was especially crazy for me when I started getting this message coming in, and it drove me out to South America. I thought I was sick. I was like I was connected to the pain of the world. I couldn't escape from it. I was just distressed by it, and I wanted to ask the question, what the fuck is going on to the gods of ayahuasca? Because that's the only place I've ever really got an answer, truly, where I've really felt I'd communed with God. You know, and, and so I went back back there and I cured my knee years ago in South America. Yeah, well, that's powerful. And so I went there and I asked, I asked, what the fuck's going on? That was the question I put to the gods. Literally that question. I know it's a bit rude, don't, no offence, you know what I mean? But it was just, that was the question I put. And the answer I got was, don't worry about your world unprecedented peace will now be waged upon your earth. Wow. And it, then it told me I was going to write a book and it told me this whole journey that it was my pain that brought me there to that place. And it, it's as much, there's two sides to this. It's like a double-edged sword and there's a very beautiful side to that pain. And that beautiful side of the pain is the actions that we take to combat that pain. Is, uh, is our direction in life is what gives us the harmony to ease that pain when we are connected to, to, to when we are connected to it. We have to change the way we live. Stay yeah. connected together, connected together in different ways and get out of this mental state we've been into for so many years. Like, uh, yeah. You know, through drugs, the, the population has been controlled through certain types of drugs and probably we need to lay off these ones and, <laughs> and go into another world of exploration. Yeah, well, I, I kind of, of the ancients, so. well, I kind of after after that experience in South America, I realised that if I was going to write, I had to really kind of like change my whole lifestyle. And I wrote for six, I wrote for six years, and I learned the practice my father learned during that time. And he, he he died earlier this year, but he was a channel, and he taught me the same technique. And I was able at certain times to open that door to get beautiful answers to these questions that I was putting. It was a beautiful experience, a beautiful time in my life. You're writing Laughing Gas was probably the, the most beautiful experience I've ever had. And then I was, I was answered lots of questions during that process. And one of the things that was, I was told was that we now approach a wall. But I wasn't told what that wall was. Okay. But it said you can throw everything you like at it, all your nuclear bombs, all your, all your depleted uranium, all your hate, all your racism, all your sort of like, all your you know, divide and conquer tactics, everything you've got to subvert this world, you can throw at this thing, but you will not take that past this wall. And so, so Humpty, you know, the, the, the book begins with Humpty Dumpty yeah, sat on a wall. It's like, um, you know, no, no one shall, shall pass through the, the hole of a needle, you know, only the righteous shall, shall, shall love, like in the Bible. Yeah, I, 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 it, it can't, it, it's reminiscent of a lot of religious, religious things, isn't it, I guess, this wall. Okay. Yeah, but e even in that, you know, there's so much, you know, I often hear that phrase, it's easier for a rich man. Mm -hmm. No, it's easier for... To enter, for a rich man to enter the eye of the needle. It's easier, for a, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye that's of the that's needle, it. is it? Or something like that. Like that's it, yeah. Or then a rich man to enter the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven yeah. But just by irony, you know, there's a perception in there. Because when you think of the, the great wailing wall that went round Jericho. Jerusalem. Okay, so... There was, I, I seem to remember there were two, there was a great needle and that needle had a tiny, a tiny, like a great door, which was the needle and it had a tiny door and that tiny door was the eye of the needle That's it. And, and to get actually to get a camel through the eye of the needle, through this door, the master would have to take his possessions off his back and then it would drop down onto his knee, yes, the camel, yeah. very easy to get a camel through the eye of a needle actually, it's very easy but the thing is that the camel has to carry his master's Possession. possessions yeah. across the desert. Mm -hmm. So it's like, take as much as you like. 
Just remember, when you pass through, you can't take it with you. Make the most of yeah, everything exactly. now. You know what I mean? Because oh. none of that, none of that shit you can take with you. But the dream. Okay, I'm going to tell you the crazy dream. Yeah, and, and, and the dream was I, I, I'd never, I'd never understood what the wall was. I was just told that we approached this wall, and that we, you know, that's it, and and we throw everything you like at it, you know unprecedented peace is going to be waged on this earth, whether we like it or not. It's a wall. Never knew what the wall was. And then I got a message. My mother's also a channel, and she gave me a message about four years ago saying that I was going to get a message. Okay, she warned you. So she kind of told me to warn me. It was just it wasn't so much of a warning. It was just it was just like something's going to come your way. And it said I would have to act on it. I would not be able to think on it. I wouldn't be able to ask anyone else what to do. I would just have to act. And I would have to make decisions. And upon those decisions, the entire opportunity of my existence here on this plane okay. balances on that. Is my chance to see oh. who I am. Not, oh, okay. not what I want to be. Not what I hope to be. Not what I could be. No, what, not what I might be. What you are. But whatever I do and whatever I don't do, that is the imprint that will be left. Whether I procrastinate and hope that I might take action or take action or do something, mm. whatever I do, it's it has to live in a doing, yeah. not a wanting, not a hoping. So it was a really pat you can imagine. It was just like, oh my god, what yes, is it gonna be? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. oh, pressure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, then I, I, I got this big gig at Glastonbury this year, yeah. doing doing um doing this. Uh, and you're a Sandman, you so you'll appreciate this as well. You yeah, know, I'm doing this. Glastonbury once a well, doing this gig at, um, in, in Shangri-La, doing this um, venue called the House of Commons, mm -hmm. which was all about the House of Lords ruling over the House of Commons by a secret of sexual, <laughs> by a secret of sexual nature. The House of Commons. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> and uh, and just before I got, just before I did this, everything was looking really, really cool, and it was all happy. And Dave, it's going to be Dave's perfect, perfect hour, and it's, it was all going to be that's great. Nice to and I'm a satirical polit politician in in England, I suppose, and with my birthday party and all the rest of it. And uh, and then I have this dream, and it blows everything apart. And in this dream, I'm being chased. I lived on this site just outside of Glastonbury. I had my caravan on this site just out of Glastonbury. Perfect. I've, I've been writing there for the last four years. Okay. I'm being chased down this grass track behind where I, where I used to live in Glastonbury. And I'm running as fast as I can. It's pitch black. Oh, sounds like a Hitchcock, yeah. <laughs> and I, I can see the outline of their faces and they're absolutely, they look terrifying. Oh, they yeah. look utterly terrifying. They're demonic, crazy. Like they're absolutely, they don't just want to kill me. They want to tear me, tear me into a million pieces. I was just like running, death. I was. It was so real. It, it was so fantastically real. And then, and then, um, I see a friend of mine, a really, really good friend of mine, who sells pizzas, and uh, and he does puppet shows, and he gets me into festivals, selling. He can help me get get into festivals, selling books, as long as I need his bread for his pizzas okay, and yeah. his puppet shows. Anyway, he turns up in my dream and he always gives me an apron when I'm working, making these pizzas. He always gives me an apron and he just turns up and I'm like, <laughs> God, what's going on? What's going on? And he said, Dave, take this. And he gives me this bundle. It's an apron. I, I just suddenly feel very relaxed wearing this apron. Mm -hmm. And I look at him and you would have thought my biggest concern would have been the soldiers running after me yeah. with their crazed faces. But actually, I find myself asking him, What's going on? Why is the light gone out? Where's the sun? And he just looks at me in this with this expression that is just utterly quite grey, quite like like he wants to tell me something really quite like. Uh, and, and he says, "I said, what's going on?" And he said, "That." And he's just pointing up. And I look at where he's pointing, and as I look at his hands pointing up, I get shot straight out into, um, into space. And I'm looking at the earth, and it's completely dark. I can see all the cities dotted, dotting across, but there's no light beyond the earth. Like, the other side of the earth isn't being bathed in sunshine whilst I'm looking at one side, which is dark. And I'm like, 
where's the sun? And I just turn around to look at the sun. And as I do, I nearly, it's just, you know, and I'm kind of a point of consciousness, I guess. I'm just a, a window on this whole thing. I just see this massive celestial object Going coming towards. towards me at massive speed with a tail. Wow. Not, not like an asteroid. Yeah, yeah. Not huge, like a comet. Huge mass. A planet. A full size, like absolute. I'm You're right just next to it. here, and I'm just, you know, I'm just like ah, wow. you know. Wow. And, and it was so crystal clear. Anything, you know, Hollywood movies, you name it. It just doesn't really touch on how graphic that was. You know, it, it, it was just absolutely pristine. And then it sails past me, and I'm just like, I can just feel this, like, ah! And I hear these words as, it, as, it, as I see it sailing towards the earth, and earth just being, it, it's just kind of, it, 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 it's eclipsing the sun. It's, it's blocking all the sunlight to earth. And, I, and I, I, I'm kind of, I, I'm just mesmerized by this feeling. Just, yeah, we can just see like, what's going on. It was completely had me, and then I just heard the words, crystal clear, bellowed through me. This is what the fuss is all about. Okay, that was the end. And then suddenly I see this crest of light <laughs> appear on the left-hand side of Earth as I'm looking at it, and it just gets closer and closer, and this light just gets it just sweeps across the Earth. And then just suddenly Earth is completely bathed in light. Okay. And this thing whoosh, carries on going without any impact. Okay. It's a close call. It's a close call, okay. but no impact. And, and I, I just jumped up and I, I, went, I went to this place, that I, 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 this kind of space that I opened, that my father taught me to open mm -hmm. with writing. And... And I said, it misses, doesn't it? And the immediate answer I got was, yes, it misses. It's not your karma. It, it, and then it said, it is deemed you are not a race at war. You're a race subverted with war. And it was, and then it just told me this whole story of how we have such a high vibration we have such a high vibration. We've worked so hard to overcome this that it can be corrected. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be all right. This is this thing has not come once before. It's not come twice before. It's come many times before. And the big worry is if it hits, and this thing doesn't hit, it's just going to go round and round. But it's going to bring change. It's going to bring big change. And change is happening all the time for mo for many people in the world right now. There's massive change. Yeah, yeah. For us right here and now, there's change, there's always change. But it's a change that's gonna help us cope with, with that, which is really trying to bring the vibration down. And that's gonna come through change. Everything comes through change. So it's gonna help us, uh, it's gonna help us raise, raise our energy, whereas, like, let's say the, the media, or the, or the agenda would be to bring us in low, low vibration. This is going to help us raise our vibration even more and understand each other even more and work together even more. What do you mean by that? It's no fear to be had in that event. It's, it's something we should welcome. Totally. It's, like it, it, feeling, yeah. it, it's, it's something we should um, embrace. Yeah, yeah. That's the feeling I'm getting. I'm, feel, I'm getting the feeling that we have got to think about the next 3,600 years. Exactly. What we do with this next uh, age. You know what? What we, what we create here will be the beginning of this new age. And the first thing, if this thing does come, the first thing we're going to do is tell those in the future that this thing is coming so they can prepare. And we can tell them, you want, and we can tell them you want to keep this vibration as high as you can, as you will not make um, it through. Yeah, you will not get, get through. That will be the first message we leave, you know, the, 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 our future generations, yeah. telling them, listen, yeah. This thing really does come around, and if you go below the radar, it, there has to be containment. There has to be containment. And actually, we've done so well, even with all this subversion that's going on, the actual vibration of Earth is actually, it's actually higher than you can possibly believe. We are waging peace. We're all waging peace in our own little way. We all know what's going on. We all see it. 
none of us can really believe this thing in the brewery or anything. It's a completely different story to everything we've been told. It just seems that so many people have come before us and said, oh, Nibiru is coming, and then it didn't come in 2012, and the man prophecy is telling us, just like the Sanskrit You've prophecy, heard it all before, so many just times, like so the it, biblical yeah. prophecies, just like, this, like uh, the Mesopotamian prophecies, that all told us this thing comes around. And in 2012, they came up here saying this thing was coming. Now we get the earthquakes, the volcanoes, yeah. the sinkholes, yeah. the raising of the sea yeah. temperature. 500 earthquakes in, wow. the, in the last two weeks. You know, this thing is getting... Well, 4th of August, we'll put it back again. 5th of August. What's the day's date? 5th of August. Same thing, two tails. Definitely not clean. Let's go through it. 